And we're going to teach it to you right now. In choir, you're going to help me. First of all, we're going to sing just two bars, okay? And look at your, the, the words are in your uh, book. And we're going to sing just two bars, and then we're going to work.
beat or rise in your hearts as we call ourselves to worship. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised. Would you join us in singing our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 178, in your hymn. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Whew. I don't know about you all, but I wouldn't mind starting every Sunday with a parade. What a way to go, huh? All right. The Gospel of John tells us that crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, singing and shouting with confidence. After this Describing the crowd, however, the gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowd shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were confused. The text says, the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like this. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade missing our chance to sing. That's why we need to pr the prayer of confession. Because life happens fast, and without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples stood. 
So let us pray, for we don't want to miss our chance to sing. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade, but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. And then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. And now, friends, I invite you to take a moment of prayerful breath as you commune with God on a more personal level. Friends, no matter what you brought with you today, no matter what you raise up to God in hopes of forgiveness, know that you are welcome here and loved, loved perfectly as only God can, without question, without doubt. This is a gift that God gives to us all, and for that we should be eternally grateful. For that, we should stand tall and in return join the parade, sing loud and unashamed of God's love for the world to hear. For that is just one of the ways that we can be thankful for this gift. And with that thankfulness in our heart, I encourage you to turn to one another and to take a moment and wave to the to the camera behind you, and share the peace of Christ with each other. May the peace of Christ be with you, friends. We invite you to rise and go ahead and turn, wave to the camera and to one another. Did it? Did any of our Did any of our younger folks venture in to the ice cold today? Is 
it on? Well, I'm, I'm, I've never been accused of being quiet. Can you hear me now? All right, excellent. <laughs> there is no battle with a microphone. There is no battle with a microphone that I am equipped to win. I promise you that. If there, so it does not appear that any of our youngest folks got out of bed this morning, and I can't blame them. It is cold and it is icy out there, so I will make our time for all God's children brief. Because you are all God's children, but I'm not going to have you all come up and sit on the steps. Unless you really want to. Um, and I do need to bask in the glory of God's forgiveness because in the lack of electricity this morning and the cold weather as I was getting dressed, I completely zoned on in, in, including my uh, children's message in the script, so I'm just going to get at the point. Something we're going to hear about today is we're going to hear about a parade, a parade that makes its way in and amongst the people that are in need. A people whose lives are made difficult by so many different things. And they cry out to Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And when I hear it, I can't help thinking, if I was a disciple, I would be kind of confused. Because what's my job? And it occurred to me as I was thinking of that and thinking of that and thinking of that is to follow Christ's example. To be a confident source of love for the world. To love everyone without question. To, to give what you can to make space for others. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. But the idea is the same. To love the world. And if there were kids here, I would take, take a moment to to ask them, maybe, I'll ask you. How do you see, where do you see opportunities to be a source of the salvation that another might need? The source of the, the helping hand that might brighten another's day? Excellent. <laughs> do any of you have an option, anything to, to include? Listening, thank you. Smiling at a stranger. S smiling at a stranger, yes. Supporting my family. Taking a minute to thank the cashiers and clerks and waiters and waitresses and, and, and all the people who, who give of their time to make our lives easier. Did I hear something from back here? Supporting my family. Supporting, your fa uh, supporting our families. Asking someone if they need help. Telling them God loves them. Telling them that God loves them. I didn't need to say anything. I could have just got up and asked this question. This is wonderful. Making sure there's space at the table for everyone. Yes. Space at the table for everyone. We, we can take a part in making sure that that space is there. Accepting everyone for who they are in that moment. Showing up. Showing up. Voting. Yes. Cooperating. Cooperating. Yes. Sometimes keeping quiet so that other people can speak. Yes. That is, that is very important and hard for me to do. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, no. But there are so many of these ways that we can be a part of that presence of Christ for the world, a part of the parade. We don't, need, we don't need to simply observe it and witness it as it walks by, and I'm not going to take my whole sermon now, but we can be a part of it. And that is really what I wanted to share today. So, yay. I don't think there's any Sunday school kids to go to Sunday school, so we'll just move on. Good morning. My name is Craig Patton, and I will be playing the role of Tim Proctor this morning. Please join me in your bulletin uh, in the prayer for illumination. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear what you have to say to us today. Amen. 
This morning's scripture is a reading from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16, and unsurprisingly involves a parade. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. It is often said that everybody loves a parade. As a complicated mix of introvert, extrovert, and aspiring curmudgeon, I can tell you that's not always completely accurate. But I can say that parades are quite often special moments, special things to experience, to witness. In my house, there is not a year that I can remember that the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade isn't the soundtrack to the chaos of that Thursday morning. Every fourth Thursday of November, butts are firmly installed on couch cushions, and the television is on. The marching bands, the singers, the dancers, the amazing floats and enormous balloons of most of my family joyfully basking in the glow of the holiday celebration. I've never been, but I can only imagine being in person. It is even more amazing. But for some of the younger members of my family, especially, all of the buildup and the energy pales in comparison to that last long-awaited sight of a man dressed in red seated in a sleigh whose name I dare not speak this early in the year. A man promising, whose presence promises a month of joy and celebration as we draw closer to the holy day ahead. Marks an end to the waiting and the expectation of what might be. Its imminent arrival made apparent in that last, most celebrated of appearances. Am I overselling the significance of the man in red on Thanksgiving morning? For most of us in this room today, I can't speak for who's joining us from home, but for many of us, if not most of us, I probably am overstating that significance. But from my young children's perspective, I'm underselling it. That Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is a shift. A moment one can see and experience. A seasonal shift. A transition of condition presented in motion. An actual arrival marking the imminent arrival of something even greater and every time we experience that, it has only been a year since we last witnessed it. So on that day so long ago, on that back road, the out-of-the-way entrance into the city of Jerusalem, another parade was taking place. And this parade was far simpler than the one we see on TV or from the side of a busy New York City street every year. There were no balloons or marching bands, no floats, and no celebrity singers. There were no on-air commentaries 
or news crews there to pick up the event. This was not a parade that came every year. It was an unexpected, long-anticipated moment. Many, possibly even most of those who gathered to see this simple procession were not emerging from opulent homes onto safe, well-maintained streets. And they were, not the most, they were not the beloved citizens of the nation that claimed that part of the world through force. They were not there to celebrate what, their, what was their lives in that moment. Those who came out to witness the humble arrival of Jesus Christ and his disciples were an oppressed people, living as other in the very city that housed the temple of God, the temple that their people had built. The temple that sat at the very center of their ancient faith. These were people who longed for justice. A people that longed for enough when others celebrated abundance. A people who longed to be who they were without fear of hate or mistreatment. And so they found themselves standing on the roadside to witness the arrival of an unexpected Savior. This was not a soldier with a sword and a shield, not a great general in his war chariot, or even a politician in their fine, clean robes. This rescuer that they came to see wore simple road-worn robes. His sandals bore the dust and scuff of many, many miles. His skin had seen much sun. This was a man whose hands bore the callus of a craftsman and whose back had borne many, many loads. I imagine his eyes did not pierce or survey as others might, but they softened and took time with other eyes that they may have met. And he didn't ride a steed. He didn't ride a muscular war horse. But he rode a simple donkey's colt. Nevertheless, despite the simple appearance of this, this Savior, the road was laid with cloaks and palms by those who came to witness the Messiah, the Savior, the one who came in the name of the Lord, and to him they cried out, Hosanna! Hosanna! Save me. Save me. Isn't that amazing? These people who had seen the might of Roman generals and governors, who had been witness to the centurions and the size and the strength of legions, saw in that simple rabbi on the back of a colt, accompanied by a small group of followers, the promise of freedom, of justice and of peace. Would you have been there? Would you have laid down your cloak? Would you have torn free a palm frond and laid it on the ground so that the donkey's hooves wouldn't need to touch the muddy ground as this man rode by. To many, that simple rider who could have been anyone and may very well have been no one at all was as the man in red is to my children on Thanksgiving morning at the end of that glittering musical, magical parade. The simple rider's arrival marked a promised shift. Not just for the Jews gathered there that day, but for the world. 
In that figure was a future previously too improbable to utter out loud. And so they cried, Hosanna! Hosanna! Save me! It erupted forth from them in this moment when suddenly, against all odds, the moment when their cries might finally be heard, couldn't hold it in. Can you hear the shift? From joy to celebration to overwhelming need, it happens in an utterance. A mouth is opened in awe and wonder and joy at the coming of Christ to Jerusalem, and from that joy comes forth a sound, Hosanna, a word that bears Christ up as Savior. It proclaims his role as Messiah, and in that same sound conveys the desperation of their hearts to know God's peace. The greatness of Christ conveyed through this parade is as equally a picture of the need that Christ came to answer. How would you describe your need to the Christ that passes this way today? What would you lay at his feet as he trod past? What would exclaim in your Hosanna to him today? Sitting in this room where we are on this Palm Sunday, we can see past this story to what comes next. We know the terrible sacrifice Christ will have to make. Hearing all those who cried out to him from the roadside that day, the body of Christ, I wonder if we don't have a responsibility to do more than hear them. What sacrifices can we make to see an injustice made right, a thirst quenched, or a sickness cured? As his followers, as Christians, we are an awful lot like that parade. As we sit, we are a state, we, excuse me, as we sit here today, we are indeed a state of need and a promise of future possibility. Our very identities bound up in that shift from what is to what can be. We absolutely have weights to bear, hardships to suffer, and we need God's help as much as anyone else, but we also have the power and potential to share God's love with others. Therefore, a responsibility to do so. The more people driven to do good, the greater the potential to achieve it. Holy Week can carry with it a dark feeling sometimes, a heaviness that is hard to accept in light of the overwhelming love at the center of Christ's story. And yet that burden, which is indeed heavy, may only be heavy on account of the love. This Sunday... Palm Sunday, remembers the joy of a parade. And yet closer attention packs it full of the burdens of life. This can be a hard balance to hold. What if the parade we see, the parade we come to with palms and cloaks to spread before the Savior we need, is not to be simply attended What if it's to be joined? What if we're meant to take up the path, falling in with the likes of Peter, 
to help bear the weight and find the change that Christ is leading the world to. Imagine the parade that that would be. May it be so. Amen. Beloved in Christ, as we enter into a prayerful space, 
I invite you this morning to find a piece of paper that you may have been handed on your way in to worship. And I would ask if one of the ushers might bring forward pieces for our choir as we introduce the prayer time this morning. Thank you so much. I'm hoping that you may have picked up a pencil or might find a pen or a pencil in the pew. Perhaps you have one with you. Perhaps you can share with one another. We're going to take a few moments of reflection this morning. In response to Palm Sunday and the word that Steve brought us, Hosanna, the crowds pronounced, Hosanna, save us. Hosanna means save or liberate us. So let me ask you this, what in your life or in the world needs saving? What in your life or in the world needs liberating. We'll begin our time of prayer this morning with a few breaths of silence that you might contemplate your response and write something down which will be for your eyes alone. But during the closing hymn this morning, you will be invited to Roll up that piece of paper and bring it forward and add it to a cross as we conclude our worship. So in this moment, consider again what in your life and in the world needs liberating. Let us pray together. God of love and grace, we lift our hearts to you this day with songs of Hosanna on our lips. Hosanna, liberate us. Liberate us from the isolation that drains a spirit, that dilutes community, that prevents us from finding one another. Holy One, Hosanna, liberate us. Liberate us 
from the addictions that weigh us down, that prevent us from living a full and healthy life, that destroy relationships, that diminish our well-being. Hosanna, help us. God of love and grace, Hosanna, liberate us from violence, from violence in the world, from the destruction that even now is tearing apart communities, dividing countries, separating neighbor from neighbor, violence too in our own homes and in our own hearts. Where rage erupts in destructive ways, Holy One, Hosanna, liberate us. Hosanna, liberate us from greed, from the choices that we make which diminish the well-being of the planet that sustains us, which prevent us from building communities that will thrive for our children and our grand and our great-grandchildren. When we make choices now, that put our future in doubt. Oh, Holy One, Hosanna, liberate us. Liberate us from the bigotry and the blindness that prevent us from recognizing your children, all your children, as whole and holy. When gender, identity, or race, or color, or culture, or ability distract us, rather than being cause for admiration and celebration, Holy One, Hosanna, liberate us, we pray. God of love and grace, this morning, we lift our hearts to you along with our palms. We wave our arms, trusting that you are there to clasp our hands and lead us on into a future where there is healing and hope and wholeness and, yes, liberation with our eyes on that possibility, we pray this day. And we lift our voices as one to pray together words taught to you by our Son and our Liberator, Jesus Christ. We pray now together, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Beloved in Christ, you have heard the good news that God is alive and at work in our midst. You have heard the call to follow. You have carried with you the reminder that we live in a world that struggles. And so we dig deep to find what we have to give, to contribute to healing and to love and to hope and to liberation. If you feel called to contribute to the ministries of First Congregational Church this day, you can do so by clicking on the QR code with your phone in the bulletin. You can go to fccucc.org and click on the donate button and in either case make a secure online gift. You can leave gifts in the box at the back of the sanctuary. However you give, whatever you give, friends, those gifts are made more powerful when we give them together. Come, let us harness what we have to tend to a hurting world. Thank you so much for your generosity. God of love and grace, pour out your blessing, we pray, on all our gifts and on all those gathered here, that they and we might be used to pursue peace and seek justice and spread your liberating love throughout your beloved world. In your holy name and in the name of Christ we do pray, amen. Friends, as we prepare to sing our closing hymn, I invite you to take those reflections about the ways that you and the world need saving and to roll up your pieces of paper. And as we sing our closing hymn, a chanting, cheering, dizzy crowd, number 180, you are invited to come forward to the cross. I'm going to come right behind you. Thank you. As you are ready and to add your reflections. <laughs> to the cross. Would you rise on your feet or in your hearts as we sing and pray together?
Amen. Friends, as we prepare to conclude our worship this morning, a few notes in the life of the church. First, the flowers on the altar this morning were given by Craig and me in loving memory of Craig's mother, Martha Patton. And the steeple is lit in memory of Bob Barras and Daniel Barras by the Barras family this morning. I invite Craig forward to offer some other announcements for us. After worship, join the mission social witness team out on the front steps of the church calling uh, today for a peace and justice vigil. Join Pastor Steve in the Davidson Lounge today at 1130 for the second meeting of the short story group. This month, the group is reading The Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu. We hope to see you there. If you would like to receive our weekly and monthly newsletters, just go to FCCUCC.org and click on Contact Us to find the Contact Info Update form. Finally, the FCCUCC Hunger Walk, which is open to anyone who wishes to join us, will take place on Good Friday, March 29th. Walkers and other participants will work to collect donations from friends, family, etc., which will be used to support hunger relief. Please contact Bruce Lockwood for more information at blockwood at portlandresearch.com. This is the beginning of Holy Week. I commend to you the whole schedule of events which are printed in your bulletins. Steve and I and Deirdre and Terry invite you to come back and join us as we continue this walk toward the cross. First on Monday, Thursday, with a dinner worship that will happen downstairs, worship around the table as we remember that final meal that Jesus shared with his friends and disciples. And then on Friday evening here in the sanctuary for a Good Friday service, which will include song and scripture and contemplation. You are then invited to stay if you choose for a vigil, which will extend until 12 midnight. There is a sign up out in the hallway if you choose to come for a one hour shift any time between the end of the Good Friday service and midnight. As many folks as feel moved to be here are welcome to participate in that time of silent contemplation. And then, of course, on Sunday morning, we look forward to greeting you along with the sun at the sunrise service at 6 a.m. And then here in the sanctuary for our festival Easter worship. I hope you will join us as we continue this journey together. your downs, you always belong to God. 